The DC superhero venture Shazam! Fury of the Gods has just been released on the big screen and it is a decent attempt from the already dying DCEU. As the film releases on the big screen, we thought this would be the best time to give you an overview, explain the ending and discuss the easter eggs. But before that, a spoiler warning is in order for those who haven't watched the film yet, as we will be discussing important plot points and character details from the movie and comic books both. And if you are done watching it, kindly follow us through the video. And yeah, while you're at it, like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on to the basic plot of the film. The film starts with the two daughters of Atlas, Hespera and Calypso, stealing the wizard staff that granted Billy Batson and his siblings the powers of the gods. The scene is quite reminiscent of the boardroom scene in the first film and is a nod to Sandberg's horror roots. The wizard Shazam stole this staff from Atlas, which was made with wood from the Olympian Tree of Life that bears golden apples, and used it to steal the powers of the gods to create a champion for the human race. The name Shazam stands for Solomon for Wisdom, Hercules for Strength, Atlas for Stamina, Zeus for Power, Achilles for Courage, and Mercury for Speed. And these are the powers that can be wielded by the champion. In the last film, Billy broke the staff into two pieces so that Dr. Savannah, the antagonist of the first film, could not use it to steal the powers from him. In order to restore the world of gods, Hesper and Calypso are eager to take back the abilities of Billy and his foster siblings, and they are also planning to plant a tree with the golden apple from the Garden of Hesperides, which the wizard kept hidden too. According to Greek mythology, the golden apple tree belonged to the goddess Hera and was believed to give immortality to anyone who consumed it. But in this case, they serve a different purpose. The golden apples were a part of Hercules' 12 labors that he was given to complete. He stole it from the nymph daughters of Atlas. The sisters share some similar traits with the nymphs. One of them can change the elements and one of them can whisper her enemies into submission by putting ideas into their minds. The name Hespera is also a reference to Hesperides, which means the names of the West. The Shazam family is still doing their best to defend their hometown, despite being referred to as the Philadelphia fiasco by the media. While saving a collapsing bridge, Freddy calls Billy Captain Every Power Jr., which is a reference to the original Captain Marvel Jr., from whom his character is derived. He also wears an identical blue costume. When Darla saves a cat from the bridge, she names it Tony, which is a reference to Turkey Tony who is a popular character from the original Fawcett comics run of Captain Marvel. Later we see that Billy is attempting to impose the all for one and one for all rule to ensure that the entire family will stay rock solid. But Freddy prefers to go outside and perform solo heroic deeds. Inside their hidden lair or rock of eternity, we see the library of eternity, a directory of the wizard's knowledge and the Room of Doors, which is a gateway to different realms. In the first film, while running away from Savannah, the kids opened a bunch of them and faced some weirdest creatures. One of them reads Fairyland, which I hope is not the strip club that Billy usually visits. As Hesper and Calypso return to their lair, they fix the star by forcing the wizard Shazam, who is imprisoned there, to speak out the magic word. Meanwhile, at school, Freddy meets Anne, a new classmate, and tries to win her over by claiming to know some superheroes. Anne's real name is Anthea, the third daughter of Atlas, and to impress her when Freddy transforms into his superhero persona, Hespera steals his powers using the staff and abducts the paraplegic boy. Before leaving the city, they create a magical dome around it, just like the wizard created a dome around what looked like Mount Olympus in order to stop the gods from committing atrocities on human lives. The dome is so strong that Billy in his superhero form could not even scratch it, and the sisters put Freddy in the same prison as the wizard. Anyway, after Calypso uses her abilities on Freddy to learn the identities of the other champions, Hespera throws him and the wizard into a pit with a dragon named Leiden which is a reference to a hundred-headed dragon with the same name from Greek mythology that never slept, and Hera appointed it to guard the Garden of Golden Apples. But Anne saves them and also aids their escape. Billy invites Hespera to discuss the safe return of Freddy and sets up an ambush with his family. They hold the older sister captive only because Hespera wants to be taken to their hidden lair, the Rock of Eternity. She steals the golden apple which is the lifeline of their lair and it can be used to grow a new tree of life. To take revenge for the atrocities of the wizard Shazam, Calypso wants to plant the tree in the mortal realm which would completely destroy the world, while Hesper and Anthea decide to do so to reconstruct the realm of the gods. While the sisters argue about what should be done, the Shazam family enters their lair through one of the portals inside the Rock of Eternity, takes the golden apple and dashes back to their home, where their foster parents discover their superhero identity. Calypso infiltrates the mortal realm riding on Leiden and she steals the powers from Darla and Eugene, 
When Mary flies off holding the golden apple, she loses her power mid-air but Shazam manages to save her and Calypso retrieves the apple. Going against her sisters, Calypso plants the apple in the Philadelphia Stadium and a huge deformed apple tree is resurrected, piercing through the ground. She also attempts to kill Hespera for opposing her and snatches the powers from Anthea. Meanwhile, the roots of the apple tree give birth to some mythical beasts like chimeras, herpes, minotaurs and cyclops that start wreaking havoc in the city. Even though they lack any special abilities, Billy's foster siblings and the wizard use ambrosia like sweet M&Ms to lure the king of the beasts, the unicorn, to fight Calypso's creature army. When Billy fights off the dragon, we see a brief cameo of Michael Gray who played Billy Batson in the 1974 Shazam TV series and he calls Billy by his comic book accurate name. We can see him in his classic costume too. Among the chaos, we also see a brief cameo by the director of the film, David Sandberg. Before going to the final battle, Billy is taught by his foster mother Rosa who gives him a tight hug in his usual form and he finally embraces her as his mother. This scene is exactly opposite to what happened to him when he went to see his biological mother who abandoned him in the first place, suggesting that sometimes the families we make on our journey are closer to us than our biological family. Anyway, Shazam locates his parents and persuades her to join him in fighting her sister. After Shazam steals the staff and entices Kalisa to enter the stadium, the older sister reduces the magical barrier that had been erected over Philadelphia until it merely encircles the stadium. Billy's objective is to battle Calypso and her dragon by using his lightning abilities to supercharge the magic staff and to keep boosting it until it explodes like a bomb, killing everything inside the barrier. Before he does it, Billy tells his family that he is ready to die in order to keep them all together and alive. Shazam finally appears before Calypso after spending some time charging the staff and striking down Calypso's dragon with a few supercharged beams. The electrifying sphere looks quite similar to the Tesla lamp that we have previously seen in Billy's room. Towards the end of the fight, he leaps into the dragon's chest with the staff, chanting the magic word and gets struck by the lightning bolt, which causes a huge explosion that kills Calypso and her dragon. Her death causes her army of mythical creatures to vanish and Hespera eventually dies permanently after realizing the champion has succeeded. Before dying, she realizes that Billy is worthy of wielding the powers of the gods. Freddy finally discovers that Billy is dead and the Shazam family along with the wizard decide that Billy deserves a burial fit for a god beneath the shades of the golden apple tree on Mount Olympus. But he does not stay dead for long as his dream girl Wonder Woman appears near his grave and uses the powers vested in her by the gods to resurrect the staff and Billy at the same time. Though he does not get to date her, he finally meets his crush. In the end, we see the Shazam family finally get their powers back and have a peaceful dinner with Anthea. And it seems the Titan daughter is in love with Freddy. The wizard comes to visit them in a brand new getup and tells them that he plans to see the entire world and not stay cooped up in a dark cave. In the mid credit scene, we see Amelia Harcourt and John Economus from Peacemaker and the Suicide Squad following the orders from Amanda Waller are coming to recruit Shazam to the Justice Society led by the Hawkman and it automatically sets him up for an eventual confrontation with Black Adam. And hopefully Shazam's character will reappear in the rebooted DC Universe post the events of The Flash. And in the post credit scene, the talking caterpillar aka Mr. Mind reappears to approach the imprisoned Savannah about a possible alliance of villains hinting at the monster society of evil. Though the sequel is not as good or emotional as the first one, it has heightened stakes and its fair share of great moments. The CGI and visuals look appealing and the silly, fun and adventurous approach of the film is a breath of fresh air in a dark and gloomy universe. Let's see if the movie can deliver financially after the mammoth failure of Black Adam, but if it does, it will be a huge deal for the DC Universe moving forward. But for the timing, all we can do is wait for The Flash's release and see how the universe reboots itself and moves forward on an entirely new journey. And will this version of Shazam make it to the rebooted universe? But the bigger question is whether he will finally be able to date the girl of his dreams or not. Not judging or anything, but this dude has serious mom issues. Also, I guess Freddy has it too, you know, for dating Anthea. Anyway, hey, 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 thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you on the next one. And for the timing, we are signing off. The with Zenia. Hey, what's up? I'm a superhero and I'll be back.